everybody! Today, let's make a side dish. This is a traditional jangdeo made with gennip. Perilla leaves jangdeo. Gennip jangdeo. I know a lot of you guys growing gennip at home. When I started sharing my recipe long time ago, not many people knew about this plant. I still remember someone told me, Oh, I thought that's a weed. I had to get rid of this because they are really growing every year. This is a very precious Korean cooking ingredient. Ever since that time, I've heard that a lot of you guys have been growing perilla leaves. Also, I grow my own perilla leaves every year on my patio. These are my gennip. I'm going to pick 30 leaves. Look at this, large. <laughs> this is more than six and a half inch. So 30 leaves and this is a hisap. It's in Korean banganip. I'm going to, this is also really minty. Very flavorful aroma, really nice. Seven, <laughs> seven leaves. These are totally organically grown, but it still has some dust from outside in the air. So I like to wash it just quickly. Here you go. And now I'm going to make a batter. One cup plain wheat flour. Add same amount, one cup water. Then doenjang, Korean doenjang around two tablespoons. Gochujang, one tablespoon. And then mix. Smells very earthy. It's because from doenjang and gochujang. And let's just chop it up. Little stems, I'm going to cut off and discard. And just roll it up and slice. I use 30 large leaves, but you guys can use maybe 20, 20 leaves. 20 to 30 leaves. In your country, you don't find any perilla leaves, no Korean grocery store. Then use spinach and also uh, basil, basil leaves or mint leaves, mixing together. And then spinach kind of is a blend, but mint or basil kind of smells like a little minty. So similar taste, you can make a kind of jangta, okay? And this leaves, hisa. And I'm going to add, to make it more kind of a little sweet and delicious and crispy, I will use around quarter cup onion. So slice. And green chili pepper, kind of this spicy green chili pepper, serrano pepper, but uh, any green chili pepper, one or two. And let's add this here. Very fresh, refreshing smell. Kind of a little thick, but this is the jangdeok. Usually jangdeok is a, a little salty. It has to be salty because uh, we eat this as a side dish for rice. Let's heat it up. This is my 12-inch large skillet. So I'm going to make a kind of a large and thick. This is a real jangdeok. My father's hometown is just southern part island. And that island food was very, very salty. My grandmother used a large cauldron. The cauldron part has, you know, large lid. And the lid is a handle. And sometimes make this jangdeok and just upside down and then make it kind of a grill pan. And they made this jangdeok. My pan is heated right now. 
and I'm going to turn down the heat to medium. I don't want to burn this because the pancake is going to be thick. Add some around 3 tablespoons cooking oil. Let's add all. This is a 12 inch, 12 inch skillet. It has to be non-stick pan. I'm using this kenyip. Also, you guys can use kale. So kale jangtok, spinach jangtok. Just uh, I can make videos, a thousand videos. You know why? Because if I make jangtok all the time, onion jangtok, <laughs> green chili pepper jangtok, I already posted my kale jangtok recipe. Why is it called jangtok instead of called pancake? It's kind of a pancake, Korean style jeon, but just in the, under the, that category, this jangtok means that seasoned with jang, Korean fermented stuff, fermented soybean paste, hot pepper paste, and also fish sauce and soy sauce. So it depends on the, your choice. You can see that you know bottom part is just uh, almost seventy percent is cooked. You see. Let's flip it over. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Turn up the heat to medium high. Okay, one more time flipping. Good. Just one more minute. First five minutes I cooked over medium heat. And then flip it over and three minutes medium high heat. And then now same medium high heat one more minute. So again. Little cool down this. So by the way, I made one large round circle kind of shape, but you guys can use a small kind of spoon by spoon, use a smaller. Smaller pancake. Let's cut. So here you go, Gennip Jangtok. We made it together. If you guys are growing perilla leaves at home, too many perilla leaves at home, what are you going to do? You gotta make this and share with your next door and family and friends. You can store this in the refrigerator up to three to four days. And whenever you need kind of some salty side dish for rice and take it out. Good for also lunch box menu. You make some little bit rice, and this, and also other kind of stir fried kimchi, and also one egg. It can be a perfect lunchbox, Korean lunchbox. And let's taste. Mm. It tastes like a duck, kind of a chewy, soft duck inside, but outside is crunchy and savory and minty and perilla leaf inside, fully packed. Korean immigrants, they know what to grow in their yard. The first time I lived in America, it was Columbia, Missouri, the small town. And I have a friend, my best friend, still we contact each other. And she has a big house and a big yard. And the growing this perilla leaves. And this perilla leaves, you don't have to do anything. Just let it grow and in the cold winter time, and then just uh, kind of looks like a dying. But next year, springtime, this coming back again. She grew a lot of perilla leaves. One day she called me and said, that I have too many perilla leaves. Please come and then pick up some perilla leaves. And then there was a really hot day. And you know, this for free, for me, that is like so meaningful. I just kept picking 
Last one, padilla leaves. I made some padilla leaf kimchi at the time. That was a really good memory. Today, I showed you how to make a gennip jangdeok, padilla leaf jangdeok. Enjoy my recipe. See you next time. Bye.